some of the Jews were conversos. So the ones that converted from Catholics, I mean from Judaism into Catholicism, they became known as conversos. The other one that I said was the crypto Jew. So they did, they converted, but they kept on with their Jewish faith because they wanted to stay in Spain. They wanted to stay in Portugal because that was home for centuries. They didn't want to leave. So they went ahead and they did what they were told. They converted, but they hid their faith. And then another name, Marranos. In Spanish, that means pigs. And they were called Marranos. And some of the authors say that the Christians and the Jews were calling them that. And I tend not to believe that because the Christians would have not known what they were talking about. But the Jews would have known. If you call someone a marano, that means you're not clean. You're not clean. You've turned away. And then uh, another term, Ladino. Ladino is the language of the Jews from Spain. They spoke Ladino. It was a combination of Hebrew and Spanish. So like I said, this is very basic information. There's a lot more that goes into this. Um, then the Inquisition came into play. And I thought that the Inquisition started in Spain, but actually historically it started in France in 1200s. And then they went to, they, in Spain they break them up into communities. They're not states, they're communities. And so the communities, the Inquisition first came to Navarre. And so they started persecuting the ones who did convert to Catholicism. So the Inquisition was about this. The Inquisition wasn't to persecute the Jews. The persecution was for the Jews who converted to Catholicism. And, they were, and, and if they were harboring their Jewish identity, or they suspected that they were hiding that Jewish identity, then they were brought to the stake. That was the Inquisition. Again, that's history. It's not to start a riot or anything, but it's history. So, the reason we know about all these names, these Sephardic names also, is because, unfortunately, just like Hitler was documenting all the Jews that he was burning, all the Jews that he was killing, they did the same thing in Spain. And I've got a... I've got a book that we're selling also. It's uh, written by, Doug, um, by Rabbi Heim Levy. And it's called The Sephardic Names. And all these names come from a, a Libro Verde de Aragon, the green book of Aragon. And I was wondering, as I do my research, I'm always pulling little strings. I read a book, and it tells me something else. And it's another little string, and I go and research some more on it, so I started uh, researching on the Libro Verde de Aragón. And Libro Verde de Aragón has to do with that community up on the northeastern side. And so they documented the Jews that they were burning. And a lot of time, unfortunately, it was after Mass. They would take the Jews to the, the town square, and they would burn them. And there was two ways. They would say, if they confessed that they truly were um, hiding their Jewish identity, and they would confess to it, then they would, um, if they didn't confess, I'm sorry, if they didn't confess to it, then they would go ahead and get green wood, and they would burn them with green wood, which is longer and more painful. If they were asked, if they were hiding their Jewish identity, even though after they converted, then they would ask for the dry, the dry wood. That way their death would be quick. Uh, give me one quick second, because there's something I want to share with you. Okay, and I'm going to struggle a little bit because I lost my glasses. <laughs> so, um, this is part of the Libro Verde. I got, I actually went to NMSU 
and I was able to obtain a copy that was typewritten in the early 1500s because the original Libro Verde de Aragón, the Green Book of Aragón, was actually handwritten because they didn't have typewriters at the time. But they went ahead and put it into print. And I think this is going to be one of my projects, is to go ahead and uh, put this out in Spanish and then translate it into English. And um, it really was an impact on me. And so the Libro Verde, we have Alonso Rodriguez de Sevilla, Doctor de Medicina, Vecino Zaragoza, Erecte Judío, y presente el 12 de mayo, 1488. So what I just finished reading was Alonso Rodriguez de Sevilla, a medical doctor. He is a, um, he lives in Zaragoza. He was found as a heretic Jew and he was burned at the stake on the 14th of March, 1888. Let's see if these work. Okay, a little bit better. They're not my glasses, but if anybody finds wandering glasses, they're mine. They're blue. Okay, and here we have Alonso de Rivera, Doctor de Medicina Natural, de Córdoba, vecino de Zaragoza, uh, hereje judío, relajado en persona a 12 de marzo de 1488. Alonso de Rivera, uh, naturalist doctor, natural herb, uh, herbalist doctor, uh, from Zaragoza. He was found to be a Jew, a hidden Jew, and he was burned at the stake on the 12th of March in 1488. And this goes on and on, it lists all the names. And because of these names, because of these documents, that's how we know that we're Jews, because of these last names. And so then uh, they were civil engineers, pharmacists, they were businessmen, and it goes on and on and on, pages and pages of documents. And so yes, we were definitely persecuted. Our ancestors were persecuted there. And so uh, then the, the expulsion of the Jews from Spain. And there was a um, King Ferdinand and Queen Isabel in 1492, May 14th, May 16th, I'm sorry. They signed, they signed a decree because they had had enough, because the Jews that were converting were being influenced by the Jews that were not converting. And so they said, enough, this is enough, we're getting rid of you. And so some authors say there was 200,000 Jews left that didn't include the conversos, the ones that converted, that were ordered to leave. They only had four months. Who was gonna buy their properties? And so the people knew that if they held out, they get it for free because they have to leave. So they left again with their pockets empty and whatever they could carry. And you see this in the stories of, you know, what happened in World War II. Just grab the clothes on your back and whatever you can carry and let's go. And so um, that was the expulsion. And where did they go? They, a lot of them went to the Turkish Empire, the Ottoman Empire. Some of them went to North Africa, to France, to Greece. To Israel, some of them went back to Israel, and then uh, when Christopher Columbus sailed the blue, and there, there are some authors that say that Christopher Columbus was a Jew, and so he brought some of those Jews with him to the Americas. So we have them in Central America, South America, and the United States, and so we have dispersed all over the world. The Sephardim. Okay, so I finished my semester at NMSU. I did my presentation, and now I'm going, wow. As, I, as you probably are going, well, this is a lot of information. How does this relate to me? How does, I go, how, is, how, how am I being impacted what I just learned? So what I did is, I went to go see my grandmother. Oh, my grandmother would have said she doesn't look like that. 
my, my grandma. And so I went to my grandma and I said, um, I said, Grandma, do you know that we're Jews? And my grandmother answered the way a Jew would answer. She didn't say yes. She didn't say no. She said, my father told me we have six days to cook and clean and sweep. On the seventh day, you will do nothing. <laughs> I knew right away, oh my gosh, Grandma, that's so Jewish. And so then I said, Grandma, when I was a little girl, I followed you around the house and you were covering the mirrors because a neighbor had died. What, what was that all about? Yo no me acuerdo. I don't remember. I didn't do that. <laughs> and so I'm like, okay. Later on I found out when somebody dies, the Jews cover their mirrors because there is no room for vanity during death. So I said, okay. So the next person of importance is my mom. And I said, Mom, do you know that we're Jews? Are we Jews? Shh. Shh. Don't be saying, don't be telling people that we're Jews. We're not. Don't be saying that. I go, but Mom. And she's like, and, then, and I realized that it is my ancestors' spiritual DNA that tells us, be careful. Because if you start telling who you are, that you're a Jew, you'll be persecuted, you'll be burned at the stake, you'll be killed. And so this is, and I found out through reading some of these books that I've been reading, that that, that doesn't just apply to the Sephardim. I love this book, because it gives stories of the, um, the Ashkenazi, and the Sephardim are the same thing. Their, their relatives have told them, hide who you are, because it'll cause you death. And so, um, again, the Sephardim is one branch of Jews, the Ashkenazi is another branch, and then there's also Mizrahi. But I'm going to keep it basic. We'll stick on to the, keep talking about the Sephardim. So anyway, I tell my mom, okay, mom, how am I to keep a secret when my mom's name is Shabbat? I never knew my mom's name was Shabbat. I thought when I was growing up, my mom has got the strangest name, Shabbat. And it was an Ashkenazi Jew that told me, because the S is also S-H, Shabbat. That's my mother's name. She was named after her great-grandmother, Shabbat, Shabbat. I go, okay, how do you keep that secret? <laughs> so then next, I went to tell my brothers, guess what I found out? We're Jews. And one of my brothers says, that's loca. Okay, you're crazy. And I told my brother something, and I said, what if I told you that we were adopted? Mom and dad aren't really our mom and dad. We are adopted. Estas loca. You're crazy. That's what happened to us. We were adopted away. And we don't know our real identity until somebody like me comes and tells you, guess what? We were taken away from who we are. And then it's up to you to decide what you do with it. I know what I've done with it. Amen. <laughs> so, after I finished NMSU, like I was telling you, I was studying international business at New Mexico State University. And part of my uh, academic requirements is that I study abroad. So I ended up in Mexico. El Pepe Monterrey in Monterrey, Mexico. The fall of 2002. I was there strictly for academics. I did a 20 hour a week internship. Give me one second to drink water. I told you I'm passionate about this. <laughs> <laughs> so I was there working 20 hours a week at Cainta. It's a negocios comerciales para los negocios pequeños y medianos. So this is a commerce. And it's for small and medium businessmen in Monterrey, Mexico. So it was my job to call up several businessmen and say, hey, are you interested in this federal program? We can actually improve your, the way you um, manufacture or accounting. So you can see it was totally business, right? So this one businessman says, I'll take you up on that offer, but I want you to go to lunch with me and you tell me what it's about. Okay, I can do that. So here we get to the restaurant, I haven't even sat down, and this businessman, who I don't even know, says, do you know your chef, <laughs> what? Love How do you know? Well, I 
just barely am learning about this. How do you know? And he said, because of your, oh, and then he first he says, did you know the Sepatim are the ones that established Monterrey, Mexico? Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. I know that. It mm -hmm. is the richest city in Mexico. The Sepatim founded it. And then he tells me, you are Sepatim because of your last name. I go, whoa, Luna. But he didn't tell me until I found, it's been a, like I told you, an adventure for me. And then I learned that the Jews don't go with the solar calendar because right now we are all operating under the Roman Empire, the Gregorian calendar mm -hmm. of Pope for Rome. And so we're not going according to the lunar calendar. The lunar calendar is what the Jews go under. The next thing about Luna is that it's a symbol of Israel because like the moon has no light of its own and it only reflects the light of the sun. So Israel does not have a light of its own. It only reflects the light of God. And so I'm like, whoa, that's all in my game. <laughs> so after Mexico, I ended up in Spain. Boy, I should go, go, go get my second degree and go through this international business. I like that. So I went to Spain. And it was in Malaga, and it was the spring of 2003, and I was there for six months. And while I was there in uh, Malaga, I, I heard, um, well, a friend of mine and I, we were going to go to the movies. Again, something so innocent, I've got a plan. And so I said, well, we're too early for the movies. Let's go drink some tea over there. And she goes, okay. So we go and we start drinking some tea. And we're talking about school or whatever. And then I hear these two men, right across the aisle from us, Sephardi, 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 Sephardi. I'm like, excuse me one minute, please. And I go and I tell these men, Disculpen que los esté escuchando, pero estoy oyendo que están con que Sephardi, Sephardi, de que se trata. So I tell the men, excuse me for eavesdropping. But I keep hearing you say, Sephardi, Sephardi, what are you talking about? What, what's, what is this? He handed me this brochure. He says, we are having the first Sephardi conference of the Sephardi in Malaga, Spain, since we were thrown out in 1492. Hallelujah. I was very blessed to go to the first Sephardi conference in Malaga, España. And so on the fifth day of this conference, I go to it. And remember I told you that there's over 12,000 resources at NMSU? This made such an impact on me, I bought it on Amazon.com. <laughs> I picked three out of 12,000. I met the author of this book. Wow. At the wow. Sephardic Conference. Wow. You tell me what the odds are of picking three books out of over 12,000. And I meet the author at this conference. So I said, okay, I think um, God is trying to get my attention. Yep. <laughs> and so the last night of this conference, they had a, a reception. And I went up to the Orthodox rabbi that I had met at this conference. And I said, Rabbi, I am 99.9% .9 sure that I'm a Jew now. But I'd like to get rid of that 0.1%, so I'll never <laughs> ever question again. Right? So the rabbi says, Ven aquí, hija. Come here, my daughter. I'm going to, te voy a presentar a este ancianito. I'm going to introduce you to this older man. He's devoted the rest of his life to help the Sephardim recognize who they are because they also know that we're hidden. Our identity is hidden from us. And so he introduced me to this older man, and so the older man says, A ver, hija, ¿qué es tu apellido? Y comienza con el apellido de tu madre. Okay, my daughter, give me your last names. And tell me the last name of your mother first. I said, okay. Bejarama. Ah, hija, tu eres más judía. Oh, my daughter, you are so Jewish. And then he goes on to tell me, your family, Bejarama? They come from a town called Bejar, that's outside of Salamanca, that's outside of Madrid. That man's a walking encyclopedia. You tell him his last, 
your last name, he tells you exactly where you're from. I was like, again, blown out of the water. <laughs> okay, Lord, I'm never going to ask again. Am I sepapi? I'm sepapi. And so the other thing I learned is the last names that end with EZ. And we can go on from here to all the way <laughs> to the Z's. Alvides, Benavides, Chavez, Dominguez, Fernandez, Gomez, Lopez, Mendes, Nunez. And I can go on and on. And Perez. Perez is mentioned several times in the Bible. He is one of Judah's sons. We don't count them as the twelve, but he's Judah's son. So we have Perez. We also have the names in Spain. So what that man was telling me, he goes, the Jews... And that, oh, that was the other thing that the businessman in Monterrey told me also. He said, we changed our Hebrew names. Mm -hmm. But we changed our Hebrew names to something that in the future we could find each other. And so one of those is also the cities in Spain. Bejar, Córdoba, Guadalajara is a little town that is, in the, that is in the community of León. So all these little towns... Madrid, Sevilla, Navarre, some of the communities, these are Sephardim last names. And then also we chose names that we could relate to as Jews, like kosher animals, baka, cow is kosher, cordero, leon, the lion, and luna, of course, like I already mentioned to you. They're things, they're objects that only Jews know about. And so we, we can identify each other. Hmm. And etc., etc., etc. There's lots. So after Spain, my wonderful, beautiful <coughs> husband, who I love very much, gave me a blessing in the fall of 2016. He took me to Israel. And I spent five weeks there with him. And we didn't go as tourists. We wanted to live with the people. We lived in a complex with the Orthodox Jews who showed me how to cover my hair. <laughs> I want to be Jewish because I am Jew. And so I learned something when I was in Israel. I met on Yom Kippur, which is the highest holy day for the Jews. We were going to the Western Wall to pray. And when we were on our way over there, I met up with some young adults. Two of them were from Russia, one of them was from Brazil, one of them was from Africa, and one of them was from England. All our stories were the same. They found out recently as adults that they were Jews, and they felt the calling to come home to Israel. That blows me out of the water, that there's not just my story, but there's many stories that are the same. And so after we came back from Israel, I found, I realized that I had taken my ancestors' steps backwards. Because they went from Israel to Spain, to Mexico, to the U.S. And so even though I'm in the U.S., my <coughs> desire is to return to Israel. And so there is no end to this presentation because our discovery is unending. Right. And so what I've listed is some key words for you if you want to do your own research. You can Google it. You can send off for Amazon books. And there's some, some names. If you look up Sephardim, Converso, Crypto, Jew, Anusim, those are our names. And I've given you some recommended reading, too. So with that, I leave you to have a little break. And we will start up in a little bit. The men's bathroom is in the back. The ladies' bathroom is down here. We have some water. And we'll start up in about 10 minutes. So unless, um, unless you have a question that everybody might want to hear. OK, let's go ahead and take a break. Thank you.